welcome to the show, Kurt Hoffman. Thanks. I appreciate it. And I apologize for my background. It's so much less impressive than your other guests, but I'm hiding in my uh, mom's basement because she's taking care of my uh, my four-year-old. <laughs> ah, you're hi I love I'm hiding in the basement. I love it. But, uh, uh, so how have you been? Uh, obviously, owning a restaurant, uh, being in the restaurant business is probably one of the most difficult times you probably face right now. Yeah, it's uh, it's tough. I mean, I don't I don't want to suggest it's more tough than other industries, but uh, you know we're at the epicenter of it. Um, you know we were shut down uh, on the 17th by the governor. Um, we actually elected to shut down on the 15th uh, a couple of days before because we just felt like we knew what was happening and we wanted to get ahead of it. Um, and uh, yeah, it's it's terrible. I mean, the, our future is kind of being decided for us right now. Um, and I think we're in for 12 to 24 months of the most difficult time uh, that our industry has been through as, for as long as anybody can remember. I mean, every every single element that contributes uh, to our industry is going to be upset in some capacity, and we're going to have to figure out how to run our businesses fundamentally differently than we have before. Um, and I think that'll only be for a year or two, and then hopefully we'll go back to normal. But this next year to two years is really going to be a, a gigantic pain. Let me ask you, Kurt, when it comes to getting back to normal, and, and on the show for the last few weeks, we've been talking to various business owners, and we all have the consensus that the normal that we used to go, and those of us who live in food cities, such as right. the beautiful city of Portland and San Francisco, and of course, I'll give a shout out to New York, uh, you know, we're foodies. How's it gonna change? What do we expect when we do get to go back and enjoy restaurants when it comes to social distancing? I mean, what is this 25 capacity of per that we're seeing uh, quoted out of Texas by their governor? I mean, how's it, what, what do we do expect when we go back to normal? Well, I'll tell you the 25% capacity is a fiasco. Uh, I don't know how, uh, I don't know how the economics work. You know, we're a business that's built essentially on seats, right? Uh, that's the revenue driver. You have a seat and a person sits in it and they spend money. And that is literally the index that you build your financial models off of. So when you're saying that only one out of every four seats uh, can be occupied, um, I mean, you have to rethink everything. Uh, so for, for us, we're, we're very, very concerned about our sit down restaurants, especially our nicer sit down restaurants. I don't right now, I don't see a path for us to be profitable. Um, while those kinds of occupancy restrictions are in place. Um, I have more hope for our fast casual concepts, so kind of sandwich shops, uh, you know, grab and go concepts where we can still maintain a pretty robust delivery uh, infrastructure. But we have really nice restaurants uh, that are, you know, more steak focused or more French bistro focused. And that food just isn't meant for to go. Uh, so, you know, we're, we're very concerned about probably a third of our portfolio um, and whether it can uh, make money or even break even uh, when these occupancy restrictions are in place. It, it just blows me away. I mean, my heart goes out to all of you folks in the restaurant world. I mean, uh, the Thank servers, you. all those folks that, that depend on the income, uh, the fact that if we take away and go to 25% capacity, I mean, you don't need all the staff that you had originally and these nice steakhouses that we all love to go to and, and, and you know, exclusive dining. It, it's heartbreaking. What have you been, what, how have you and your group responded to your employees and everybody that's working for you, the, the folks that truly depend on the tip money and the foot traffic? Well, the, I mean, we we closed and our first priority was getting everybody on unemployment um, because we needed them to be safe. Um, and that took us about a week because we closed before everybody else. We were kind of first in line with our employees. So that was an advantage. Um, and then we subsequently dealt with all of our debt, all of our landlords. You know, you just kind of triage through everything you have to figure out when you have literally zero income. Um, and then we started building our to-go programs, uh, which had to be new because they're contactless, right? So you're supposed to have a driver that comes up and you figure out a way to just hand them around the door uh, a bag of food. And so you're never in face-to-face -face contact. So we've held ourselves to a very high standard, certainly much higher than the grocery industry, for instance, um, in trying to make, make sure that we continue without putting our employees at risk. 
Um, but it's, uh, you know, for our employees, it's, it's a real peculiar time, right? Because they're, we, we start our people at nobody earns with tips less than $15 at our, an hour at our restaurants. Um, and so for that 15 or $16 an hour, uh, employee, which would be amongst the lower paid employees, um, they're currently making significantly more on unemployment than they would be when they're working for us. Um, so that, that's what I wrote my op-ed about. And it's a real odd uh, situation because usually I like to think that my interests and my employees' interests are aligned to the extent that I offer them enough money to make the job worthwhile, right? That's kind of the contract that we have with one another. And uh, right now I can't offer them enough money uh, to come back to work uh, because they're getting paid almost $8 an hour more uh, uh, by the federal and the state government. So we're in this really weird period uh, of non-alignment um, and that'll go on until July 31st. Um, so we're just trying to think, do we wait till August 1st to open? Because that allows our employees to maximize kind of the benefits that they get through the state while also keeping them safe. Or do we try to open sooner, uh, which there's a certain economic incentive to do that because we're paying rent. Uh, we can't defer things forever. So it's in a it's a real weird situation. Um, and uh, we're just trying to navigate it. Well, it, it's amazing. I, I'm at a loss for words. I mean, I'm just sitting here and I'm like, my heart breaks uh, for your, you know, for everybody. It's, it's a difficult situation, right? As a business owner, you want to open your doors. You want to serve the public that wants to go to your fine, you know, fine establishments. Trust me, you have a reputation here in Rip City that is second to none. And it, it is difficult. I've talked to several business owners who keep telling me, Eric, my folks make more on unemployment than they do we're coming to work anymore. So right. it's it's hard. Like, how are we going to get them to go? And these are people in the construction field who have jobs that they've bid on, and they depend on these jobs so they could so they could get paid to keep their own lights on. It, and it's just turned into this mess. And I think, and we don't have to get. I don't want to get political at all. I just right. think some of these governors haven't really given a clear path to your business, or especially in the restaurant industry, right? I mean, you're sitting here and you're ordering food, but what are we all griping about? I mean, the number one gripe for some of us is like, well, by the time it gets to me, my food's cold or nasty, or, <laughs> right? It's like, I want to go right. out in public, but you've got the goodwill police out here yelling at you to put a mask on if you're out right. in public. If you're just So there's no fine line. I mean, and before you go, uh, we got one last you know, little question for you. So where do we go from here? as a what is your guys plans moving forward to set a positive light how are you driving to, to be the tip of the spear well what we're planning to do is um everything that we're going to talk about in terms of preparing for opening has to do with uh earning and confirming the public trust and our commitment to their safety i think a lot of the plans right now to reopen are doing so in a pretty hasty fashion where for instance uh, places are currently planning to reopen uh, before there's widespread testing available. And they're kind of avoiding the obvious, you know, elephant in the room, which is that you're going to have employees like they just had uh, in Texas. There are 15 employees that work for Chick-fil-A that tested positive uh, uh, at the reopen Chick-fil-A's down there. Um, so you're avoiding the inevitability that something like that will happen, either an employee test positive or was in contact with somebody. Um, and irrespective of whether you think this is a real risk or not a real risk or what the mortality rate is, the reality is that it's a thing and the dining public is worried about it. And if you can't test your people, if you go through the thought process, you know, in the game theory of what you do, the only thing you can end up doing before there's testing is to close because you can't test your employees you can't guarantee their safety. You can't guarantee the safety of your guests. So if you open before there's testing, you know, you, you have to be willing to confront the reality that you may have to close back down uh, to allow everybody to self-quarantine. Um, so what we've been working on are strategies of how uh, prior to testing be available where we can open. And the only one we figured out is to work with two different teams that never see each other. So we have a four day a week team and a three day a week team uh, to run our restaurants. Um, and that seems to be the only way to assure that, uh, well, worst case scenario, right? We are open half of the week, but, um, you know, these opening plans need to be conscious of that. 
Uh, and so that's our principal concern right now. And um, we're excited to reopen. I mean, that, you know, we serve people and we take care of people and that's kind of in our DNA. So I'm very anxious to get to it, but I don't want to do it until I feel like I can protect my employees and reassure them that, you know, that they and I are once again aligned about their safety, about their wages. And if we're doing that, then we're also protecting the interests of our guests who ultimately pay the bills. Well, Kurt, I want to thank you for coming on today. Uh, your insight is, is truly incredible. And uh, our thoughts go out to you and everybody on your team and all your employees having to deal with this fine line, right? Being an, ex being an ultimate leader. You, you are a leader, my friend. Uh, coming from a military background, I can tell you, you, you scream leadership. That's what a true leader is. You are worried about the, the people to the left or the right of you and your customers. You have this fine line that I, I don't envy you, my friend. Uh, but we we are behind you here in Rip City. We will. I Thank can't you. wait for your doors to open. We'll be the first in line, especially for a steak, because, hey, other steak houses decided to take money and got caught and they don't deserve our business. We'd rather come give you our dollars any day of the week. So you've got me as a customer and thank I'll you. bring a whole bunch of business to you, my friend. So thank you. Before you go, tell folks how they can find out more about yourself and if you're in Rip City, how they can uh, order. Well, the name of our restaurant group is Chef's Stable. Uh, it's like a chef stable or a chef's table. Um, and it's a play on words that we use. We provide stability to chefs. We work with a lot of chefs, like a stable of chefs. Um, and it's like a chef's table. Um, but at chefstablegroup.com, if you Google us, we're uh, on the internet. We have 20 different restaurants here in Portland, a catering company, bakery, and some other things. And uh, yeah. And uh, by the way, go Blazers. <laughs>